Yeah, I'm losing my edge. What I can't give the U.S. dollar here, Pete, is uh, any more slack because it's been a lot of selling in U.S. dollar. And today we're going to talk about how low this U.S. dollar can go because uh, it seems like every day it just moves lower. 15 of the last 20 trading days, uh, this U.S. dollar has moved lower. That's uh, you usually like to think theoretically of markets having a 50-50 split between down and up days. And historically, you could look at almost any market, uh, even if it's a market that's you know up 100% in whatever time frame, it usually is around that 50-50 split. So 75% down days in this uh, data set here of the last 20 trading days is, is something to write home about for sure. And down 3% in July, also something to write home about because Pete, currencies usually, as we're going to get to in a second here, uh, are, are lucky to see 5 10% in a year. 3% right. in July, uh, not to mention a 3% move in uh, mid-May to mid-June here, 3% move off of the highs in late March as well. This is a, a pretty volatile year for the U.S. dollar. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? Uh as you mentioned, on average, three, three and a half percent, um, the average move in, in FX. That's why you, you know, you see the the leverage in FX so high. It's not because it's like, oh, well, you know, it's more of a gambler's paradise. It's a function of volatility. So uh, the amount of movement is, I mean, this is a, you know, a, a really large, uh, a really large uh, dollar movement in such a short amount of time. So I think, you know, part part of me too is the dollar's hung up near that high level for quite some time. Uh, we often talk about. I think we sat there through January and February before the pandemic. It's like, geez, stuff is kind of coming a little bit. Whether it's equities up high or the currents or the interest rates were coming a little bit unsettled in terms of their ranges. Why won't the dollar move? And this is classic kind of dollar. It 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 bides its time and. Yeah. We, we've drawn a, I mean, we've drawn the hospital flat line through interest rates right now. There's just nothing to do in equities while still getting those big moves are, you know, in the top 5% of where we've been in the last 60 trading days. The dollar tends to do this and it tends to do that with some gusto. So we'll see how this shakes out. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because metals, as we're seeing today, even exhibiting large, large moves, but I mean, FX out of all the asset classes, I would say that foreign exchange here is probably the second place, most volatile, interesting piece right now. And that's second yeah. place to like, I mean, it, it's in essence being second place to like the Jordan Bulls of the 90s because metals right now are moving like they haven't moved in decades. And so to call this the second uh, biggest mover is really nothing to scoff at. So I hope people are looking at this US dollar past just uh, that precious metals because yeah, you look at some of these uh, percentage moves. You look at the average annual move for this forward slash SFX product being give or take five percent. Uh, maybe on a, on a big year, uh, the U.S. dollar falls or gains about ten uh, percent. And you've seen here already a rally up to seven percent higher, and then giving all of that back and then some. So you've seen a seven percent rally, Pete, an eight percent sell off, and we're midway through the year. This is, in essence, I mean, so if I wanted to liken this to stocks, uh, the average move in stocks, give or take, would be around uh, 16 to 20%. So let's say that SFX is like a third that of the small stock 75. That would mean that this move here in SFX would equate to about a 21% rally right. in the stock market and then a sell-off of close to 25%. Those are huge moves here, huge back and forth. What's really nice, Pete, we'll get into this a little bit later, but you know, this is almost a 3% rally, a 4% sell-off, right. an 8% rally here, and then pairing back half of that, you know, a nice 4 or 5% sell-off, and then another sell-off on top of it, but bounces along the way. This is not like what, what in essence has been you know, the, the stock market trade where it was, like you said, kind of rallying the start of the year, sell off, and then it's just been rallying. This dollar market, less correlation to the equity world than almost any asset class and seeing a ton of back and forth as that equity and interest rate asset class, those two asset classes, Pete, just they went one direction and now they're going a different direction. A ton of opportunity here um, throughout the year. And yeah, you're seeing right as of now, Pete, more than 8% off of right. those highs of mid-March. Uh, and 
this is a tough one. And this is kind of the conundrum of, uh, that I want to try to solve here, which is U.S. dollar is only off a little bit more than a percentage point on the Can year. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are you going to define conundrum at some point during this slideshow? <laughs> conundrum no, is, is. I don't a, mean to. Uh, I don't mean to disturb you, but please proceed. Well, that's funny. That that's like on uh, on Google, the Google Dictionary, whatever they do, they show you how relevant the word is that you're looking at. And I would say that one would have been a lot more relevant a few decades ago. But I'm still, impressed. I'm still impressed. kind of relevant. But anyways, what we are trying to solve for here is, you know, the market just barely. Uh, down on the year, but off 8% in the last couple of months, off uh, about 6% in the last two months or so, and then in the last month, off 3%. Is there a, a trade here for a little bit of back and forth? And, and this is another rough one. When you look at the euro, which is probably the best uh, barometer for like the inverse of this dollar, and I only want to bring it up because I want to look historically, you can see that uh, if you t you look at this as the inverse of that U.S. dollar, uh, the U.S. dollar, while it's given back about that seven or eight percent from the highs or the lows in euro here of earlier this year, that U.S. dollar is still up about 16, 17 percent, Pete, in the last decade. So the problem here becomes, OK, I want to trade price extremes. I want to right. trade big moves like we just showed uh, here in the U.S. dollar for the last few months. But it's down 8% off of a 25% rally for the last decade. Do How do you view something like that? Because you've been actually pretty good about staying short this US dollar amid uh, the fall here, amid yeah. all this. You've, you've stayed short, almost like looking at each of these bounces for opportunities sh to short. But at some point, this is a little bit of a price extreme. It's, it is like uh, the stock market of March, Pete, right? Where it was like, okay, it's rallied for three straight years and it's it's up really high if you were looking to at prices relative to 2015 and 16. But the stock market sold off, you know, 30% in a matter of a couple of weeks, equivalent to like we were talking about this move. And at some point that stock market was cheap. And as we've seen in the last couple of months, it's bounced back. Do you see anything here in the way of short-term opportunity? Because we've seen absolutely 3% yeah. yep. sell-offs, Pete, met with bounces. Right. And, and you know what? Um, I think that no, as much as we talk about it, nothing goes one way, but uh, picking, you know, that's where the opportunity lies. Uh, obviously, every one of these markets is susceptible to silveritis. So be mindful of that fact. <laughs> but uh I, I silveritis. That's not even you. You talk about conundrums. Silveritis is. Uh, I think we're going to call it silveritis because this is this is <laughs> this is. And I hate when they say, "Oh, this is old school silver." What the heck does that mean? So silver moved when you were twenty <laughs> years younger. Yeah. So what? Um, silver didn't get old. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what that. But yeah, yeah. Th this is a market that tends not to move like silver, right? Well, right, and it it has had the. You know, in terms of location, I think this is a great contrarian play. So not to get too clever. So just and just to, you know, because that's that's the conundrum is that I was dollar bearish and I caught some of this nice move, whether it be long euros or other pieces. Um, and I've taken that off and now I'm turning myself around. So the question is, are you think you're smart enough to pick both sides? Absolutely not. I'm turning myself around or looking for a bounce here with about a quarter of the size and I've got a very tight leash on it. So uh, you know what? I'm looking for, like you said, that ebb and flow back and forth to stay engaged with the product and try to trade a little bit of the range here. So that's, you know, so sizing becomes a question when you're contra trending like this. Um, I, that's not a good word either because I don't like that. No, I like this. We're just workshopping new vocabulary. I love it. Yeah, but you know what? That that becomes the whole. It, it just gets you the whole momentum thing. Momentum contra trending gives you nothing. What does that mean? Where are you picking a level? Why? I think more about the mechanics of size and and what you give it in terms of rope uh, and tools. I mean, we use short euros to do some of this and uh, long dollar index. So no, you're, you're, you're totally right there. I think what you're getting at is you can have, you know, opposing opinions, you can have different strategies. And those Absolutely. at the end of the day, this isn't like a competitive market whereby, 
Pete wants to be short dollars. I want to be long dollars. Only one of us can win. And I hope that he loses. You know, th- this is a scenario where Pete has That's been it. Sh- no mescal money for you this week. <laughs> Pete has been short dollars for the last, you know, as a long term trade. It's been uh, honestly, I feel like we were getting short US dollars last year and we were long or wrong a lot right. of the times being short. Oh, and so it's worked out the last uh, few months here. But Pete can flip himself around for a short term trade here and be correct both in a long-term dollar bearish right. trade, but a short-term dollar bullish trade. And it's just a matter of, like like you said, Pete, picking your strategy and picking your market is what's going to be essential here. Um, and, and I think just looking for a, a, a dollar bounce with this SFX product, one doesn't necessarily kill you like some of those huge. I mean, the Euro market has rallied thousands and thousands of dollars over the last uh, couple of weeks here. Australian dollar, even more, a huge, huge rally of what, like 20 grand in the last uh, uh, few weeks. This is a a market here that will, you know, it would have to be a a real extreme move to get to the multiple thousands of dollars. Um, But also just in terms of the long strategy, why I would look at getting long is merely, this is the standard deviation. This is what's normal for these markets here in the short term and in the long term. And this dollar market on a daily basis is underperforming what's normal on a weekly basis, underperforming what's normal and on a monthly basis, underperforming what's normal. To me, it's a price extreme. It's due for one of these short term bounces that we're looking at. And I think SFX is a product to take advantage of that. I agree because you know what? Again, we always talk about selection dilemma. It's tough to pick. Euro stands in our mind because it's finally exerted a little bit of overperformance, but underperformance. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's challenging to, well, which one's going to roll over or, or by how much. Yeah. I like the simple expression of opinion here. I really do. Um, I, I think this is kind of, uh, I, nothing in the trading world is a no brainer, but this is much more simple to wrap an idea around than trying to parse through what is right, what is wrong. And the frustration of, of having the right idea, the dollar stops falling or holds in there and bounces a little bit and having the wrong product just because there's noise. So this is this really takes noise out. And I love that because it's yeah. a simpler expression. Yeah, you, you just want to answer literally how low can the dollar go? Right. I, okay, I think it can't go any lower in the short term. And so you go right to SFX with that opinion. If you think it's the the inverse, you're totally right. It is the, sl- the simplest way to take the answer to this question and go to market with it.